Board. Hello, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Brit Kanawa West Hancock Athletics Podcast. Dan Crawl here, March 27th, 2024, for episode 104. And this evening, I have some state champion uh, and future Hall of Fame inductees this fall, the 1978 and 1979 Kanawa Boys track and field state championship teams uh, i'm pretty excited we got a big group tonight we're still waiting on one more to get in here uh big group as you can see on the screen pretty excited to let these guys reunite and talk about mm. those two state championships back in the late 70s so uh before we get to them though this podcast can't be possible without my sponsors uh as you can kind of see on my screen it's kind of small little box there since we have so many people 20 sponsors tonight so a lot of good money going into the sanger legacy fund uh, like always, the Legacy Fund is used for the West Hancock Hall of Fame. We give scholarships to seniors every year. We support the athletic and activity funds at West Hancock and any other community outreach program. Anyone that has a need, we win a championship, whatever it might be, we help fund all those things to make things possible for our kids and our community. Uh, so if you want to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund, you can go to sangerstrong.com. If you want to sponsor the podcast, get a hold of me, Dan Crawl, and uh, we'll, we'll get that going. Uh, my sponsors tonight, though, I have Nick Schmidt, Levi Don Trucking, the Brit Vet Clinic, Trollson Auto Parts, Window World in Mason City, the Brit Car Truck Bike and Tractor Night Cruise, Mojo Productions, Miller and Sons Golf Cars, Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Doug and Kathy Zool, Daniel's Auto Collision in Charles City, Triple B's Food Trucks in Southern Iowa, Swenson's Hardware, Jeff and Becky Nielsen, the Brit Food Center, Kelly Real Estate, Party Care Transportation, LLC in Kanawa, the Kanawa Community Home, Easy Wash Cleaning Systems in Clear Lake, Stevens Realty, and Deemer Realty. So again, a lot of sponsors. Thanks to all those sponsors. And uh, my Way Back When episode, highlighting 50 episodes ago. Uh, perfect, I was telling the guys before. It's a Kanawa episode. Episode 54 was the legendary uh, Kerry Van Winkle, the former football coach for the Bulldogs, uh, and he went on to Roland's story. So... Uh, there's Dan, perfect timing, just in time for introduction. So, Mark, you don't get to be the last one anymore. Dan took that honor for intros. Uh, like I said, 78-79 Kanawa Boys track and field teams, uh, along with the 1948 and 1952 baseball teams. These teams were the only state championships in Kanawa history. So, uh, a lot of pride in these teams. And like I said, they're going to be 2024 West Hancock Hall of Fame inductees September 6th at the uh, halftime of the football game and then at the Brit golf course after the game. So pretty excited to induct these guys at that game. So we're going to start with some introductions. These guys are just going to tell you who they are, uh, where they're at these days, and what's keeping them busy. And we're going to snake it from Kurt over to Denny and then down to Bruce to Rod and then down to Dan Ziegler over to Dan Mallon. So go ahead, Kurt. Hi, I'm Kurt Harley. I graduated in 1980 and my wife and I Mary live in, live in Clear Lake. Um, I work for Mercy One North Iowa in management and been in hospital administration for a lot of years. My son, Jake, and daughter, Caitlin, both graduated from Clear Lake and are now married and living in the Twin Cities. So thank you for this opportunity tonight. Steve? Hello, uh, Steve Pregnitz um, from 1979. Um, I'm currently just north of Houston, Texas, I'm recently retired. I'm still with Linda. You guys all know, remember Linda from high school. And we have um, two boys who are both married and two grandkids. So spending my time uh, enjoying them. Denny. Denny, Denny Kraft or Dennis Mallon? Denny. Mallon, sorry. We have too many doubles here. <laughs> Go ahead, Denny Hello. Mallon. Hello, everyone. Dennis Mallon. Um, I currently am married to Jody. We've been married next year will be 25 years. We live in Des Moines. We've been in Des Moines for approximately 30 years. Um, I currently, I was working with Wells Fargo for 18 years, took a year off. Now I'm working with uh, Northern Trust out of Chicago as a business systems analyst. It's great to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Bruce Kraft, go ahead. Hi, I'm Bruce Kraft, and I'm a graduate of uh, Kanawa at 1980, and um, graduated from Iowa State University. My uh, wife and I live up in the Twin Cities, 
and uh, in Chanhassen. However, um, I worked in corporate finance for about 30 years, retired from that in 2016, took a year off, and now I'm living the dream. I went back to Iowa State, and I'm a professor in the College of Business at Iowa State, and I uh, get the opportunity to go see the Cyclones as much as possible. There you go. Scott. My turn. Scott Jackson, I'm a graduate of 1979. I'm married to Dawn for 40 plus years, good years. We got uh, two grandkids, that's what I like to hang out with. That's my fun for the whole time. I, uh, I work at a corporation called Verative where I'm the operations uh, coordinator, that's what it's called. Um, I've been there for 40 plus years. Before that, I was in the Air Force and the Air Guard. Buck. Uh, yeah, Danny, Buck, like everybody knows me, Kraft, Jane and I are still married, still from high school. We've got two kids. We moved to Pella in 1987. We have uh, both our kids are married. They live in town. We have a seven grandkids. And I'm still working because I'm not ready to quit yet. There you go. Mm -mm. And Buck knows my brother-in-law from Pella, Brad Hesseltine. They... Yep, sure do. Yep, good dude. Kathy Barkema, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rod, Coach Barkema. I've been called worse. <laughs> uh, Rod Barkema, coach of these characters here. Uh, some of the best years of my life spent in Kanawha. I was a 1971 graduate of Ventura High School, kind of a conference league school there. Um, spent five years at Winona State University, played football up there. First teaching job was in Western Iowa in a little town called Schleswig. Got back to Kanawha, I think that first year in Kanawha, I think probably what, two or three years, maybe four or five years difference between Buck and my age as far as that goes, but uh, <laughs> pretty pretty close. So I was still pretty much wet behind the ears when I got the, got that job and actually fell into a great group of kids and a great community, great supportive community, educationally and athletically. Um, I retired, what, 16 years ago. Um, Kathy and I, my wife, Kathy, we've been married for 46 years. No kids. I guess we had plenty of them at the school and so forth. I taught in Kanawha for 11 years and then retired in up in Four City. I, I taught elementary PE in Four City, and we had more kids in our elementary building than the town of Kanawha had population. So it was, it was quite a quite an eye opener for me chasing those rugby. They kept me young, that's for sure. But uh, I'm just glad I'm still available to do these type of things. And Dan, you do a super job with these podcasts, and it's just great seeing everybody's face. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of other things that'll come up during the evening. Yeah. Hey, Rod, is Kathy retired? She's retired. Yeah, she retired. She hung on a couple more years. So, but. Uh, both retired, enjoying it. Don't don't do it well. We get out now and then, but kind of homebodies. Mr. Ziegler, uh, Danny Ziegler graduated in 1979. Uh, married my high school sweetheart, of Pam Ziegler. Most of you guys won't remember her. 42 years. We had one child in the Waukee area. After graduation, we. Uh, went to college and then I started traveling. I lived in Nebraska, Kansas, multiple times in Iowa buying livestock. And then after that, my wife got a degree. So she wanted to do some things. So she was a school administrator and I started selling farm equipment and she's finally retiring this year and I started farming. So uh, I don't know, someday we'll stop. But uh, we've got one daughter that lives down in Des Moines, and I assume that we're going to be moving that direction pretty soon here now, since we're she's retired and ready to move on. All right, Kent. Yeah, um, Kent Meiskins, and also 79 grad. Um, I've been, uh, well, we got, I guess, four, four kids right now, and... Uh, one grandkid and another one on the way. So yeah, that's always the fun part, uh, going down and visiting the, the granddaughter right now and pretty soon a grandson, I guess. So uh, do that. I've been a teacher most of my life and uh, I taught for 32 years here in Iowa, then, then retired and went to Kansas, taught for five years, retired there, thought I'd be done, came back to, I live in Panora, Iowa, 
um, then decided I'd teach again. So I've taught for the last two years. So this is year 39, but I think third time's a charm. I'm going to, going to retire this year and I think I'll be done. So I guess 39 years is enough for teaching, <laughs> teaching and good. coaching all the time. So doing all that kind of stuff. I'm 13 years in. I'm a little jealous right now. So yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Mark. Yes, I'm Mark Stupka. I'm a 1980 graduate of Kanawha High School. And after high school, I went on to college. I met my wife, Janice, there. And um, then I went into teaching and coaching. I was a teacher and coach for about 15 years. And um, and so I spent eight years up in Minnesota and seven years in Iowa um, before uh, in 1999 is when I started uh, teaching at uh, Faith Baptist Bible College in their teacher education department. And so <clears throat> I've been there since 99. So I think this is my 25th year there. And uh, so this is my 40th year in education. And I've enjoyed uh, coaching a variety of sports, basketball, um, and uh, soccer has been the uh, sport I've coached the most. I was the women's soccer coach at Faith uh, Baptist for, for 10 years and uh, really enjoyed coaching. And um, so my wife and I have four children, two girls and two boys. And uh, we had uh, 10 little granddaughters uh, before uh, we finally got a grandson last last uh, month here. So we have 11, 11 grandchildren. So wow. so we're blessed with that. Yes. And uh, Mark, literally about a minute ago, Tim McKinney texted me, wanted to get together. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm literally doing a podcast with Mark Stupka. Tim and my yeah. <laughs> my Mark know each other from faith. So yes, yeah. Small Good world. Time. And then Danny Mallon, last but not least. Dan, can you hear us? Oh, he, he, his audio might not be on. Dan, can you hear me? I don't think he can hear us. Uh, we'll hey, see. Dan. Oh, can you hear us, Dan? I don't know if he can hear us. Well, I'll try to troubleshoot that while you guys are telling stories and talking here. Um, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. This is Bruce. Can I can I just say one thing yeah. real quick? Yep. I'm going to get shot by my kids because I didn't mention my kids when I went through. So I, I wanted to let everybody know I do have three kids. Um, my daughter, Allison, lives down in Huxley. My son is out in Boston and my youngest daughter in the Twin Cities. And we also have two grandsons. So they're going to listen to this at some point in time. And I want to make sure uh, that I didn't miss putting them in here. So there you go. Yeah, you don't want to get that that happened to you. So yeah. Uh, one thing I got to point out here, most of you guys read my email and, and put up your old gear in yeah. the background. That's always a popular thing. But before we hit record, some guys were like, well, the material shrunk <laughs> and I uh, can't wear it anymore. So it's that, that old cotton. So for those of them wearing the material, the clothes, you know, just let you talk about that later. But um, Kanawa gear is well represented tonight. So that's pretty fun. And uh we, we're going to talk high school track and field here about a team that won two state championships. And I think a good starting point would be that you guys did not have a track or track. Uh, what was, uh, what'd you have uh, coach Barkmo? Let's start with you. How'd you, uh, you came in, inherited a pretty good group of guys. You're like, we don't have a track. What, what practice looked like for you guys without actually having the, the surface to run on? Yeah, it was, it was, Quite an interesting task. And of course, again, too, I, like I said, I was still pretty much wet behind the ears. That was basically my <clears throat> second year of teaching and coaching and uh, <clears throat> dropped in there. What we actually did, I don't know if you guys remember Superintendent Leroy Scharnhorst, mm -hmm. loved the track program too. And we spent a lot of time with uh, wires and strings and, and painters, parking lot painters. And we actually lined a 400 yard track on the grass. I think we had three lanes, and I, if I remember correctly, I think we hosted a, a middle school track meet there. Yep. Um, so that that was pretty awesome from that standpoint. But, you know, you guys remember as well as anybody, we did a ton of street running, uh, the gravel road east of town, out and back to the Twin Lakes and whatever, a lot of that running, uh, snow drifts and, you know, snow boots on here and there, but uh, and a lot of indoor work too in the hallways and the gymnasium, but 
it's just a testament to the abilities of these guys to perform like they did. And maybe, maybe it was a blessing we didn't have one because I think that first outdoor meet, we maybe run at Brit up there and these kids go, my God, this is a real deal. This thing actually pushes back a little bit. So it, uh, it was, it was, it's quite interesting. As I said to him, many articles in that Des Moines register after those two state titles, you know, the one article I remember, they do okay without a track, you know, and, and uh, so that was pretty interesting, but it was, it was a, it was a teamwork by all people involved and the kids did a great job of adapting to it. Rod, I have a hard time walking down a school hallway right now without thinking of us hmm. sprinting down those hallways and wondering why we didn't get injured in the process. But well, yeah. we did a lot of training on a rainy day early yeah. in the season, running the hallways, and I always remember that. Yeah. That's that's where we did our handoffs. We got our steps right. down on our handoffs right. Right. on the hallways yeah. because yeah. we didn't couldn't do it on grass. No, not if it was wet. Yeah. Did uh can I ever talk about putting in a track at any point? Do you guys know? Was that ever can uh, talked about? Not you that, know, that there was, <clears throat> you know, not that I know of. Um, you know, back then too. I mean, the cost of doing anything, even if it was just a cinder track, and I guess we felt pretty good. The fact that we could just line that thing and put in lanes, and we painted exchange zones, and we had the whole nine yards, and it was it was pretty impressive little deal on grass, but you know. If we had any little bit of rain or any frost or whatever, it was pretty much, you know, it's it tough running on it. But we felt pretty good about the fact that we were able to make our own track every spring. Dan, what were you, Ziegler, what were you going to say about there was No, I believe at one point, uh, Dennis and Danny Mellon's dad was kind of spearheading trying to get a track started, but it just didn't get any traction. I mean, there's really no money, and and it was just it was a matter of time at that point before they got absorbed. Yeah, he was trying to do some fundraising in the community and outside the community, even uh, state leaders, that kind of thing, getting grants, but it just didn't happen. Yeah. Right. If you guys wouldn't have been so good, they wouldn't say, who needs a track? Look at the talent they've got. They, they can do okay I think Kent them. mentioned, we all ran a lot of blocks and a, a, the four blocks was like a 400, but Kent, yeah. I think you mentioned some see us. We tried to find the shortcuts as everybody probably remembers. <laughs> now well, you tell before, me. A lot of times I remember before we, uh, before the track was spray painted on, we had cones around there and, you know, we, you know, and coach would always say, Hey, go over there and run, you know, run the 200, 300, whatever we were running. And every time we went, we moved the cone in about a foot <laughs> to make it just a little bit shorter. I remember <laughs> I, I didn't do that. You guys did that, but I, you know, I didn't <laughs> that happen. that's what you can do when you only have one coach on a coaching staff, yeah. <laughs> no assistance all those years. Times kept getting better. The times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, actually, I, actually, I don't even remember them uh, having a track. All I remember was the four corners of the football field. Yeah. I must have had the short track. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't want to run anything over 200. Yeah. Do you guys remember, uh, Rod, you maybe would at least the year prior, but before the titles in 78, 79, how how did you guys do at the state level uh, the years directly leading up to the state championships? Yeah, class, I, class I of seventy four won the four by one. Yeah, that'd be Kurt's Kurt's brother Ned and yep. Randy Jordanger and Marv Chenary and I Chenary. think Todd Carter. Yeah, Buck would probably have more insight on that. You know, my first year there, coming there, and of course Buck was a senior and had been at the high school level three years prior to that. But uh, and I just remember, of course, I was graduating from Ventura High School, which is the same league. And you know, looking back then, I don't, you know, you forget about as far as track meets when you're competing against whether it's Boone Valley or Canal or Goldfield or Corth Wesley Laverne or any of those schools. But uh, of course we're talking a few decades ago. Yeah. Uh, well, Tony Morris, Tony Morris, the year uh, he'd have been a, he'd have been, he'd graduated 77. He won the four open 400. Right. Well, 440 it was back then, but he won that in 52 nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there were in 77, I remember you, you, the seniors, you, you put a lot of them on the medley. Yep. And that left the 
the four by 200 right. for us sophomores. And so I think it was, I don't remember who was on all on that. Was it Danny Ziegler, the two Mellons and myself? Is that was who was on yeah. that? Yep. And I think I dropped the baton handing off to Dennis <laughs> on the, between the second and third leg. So we, we awesome. didn't finish the race, but we got, we qualified for state and got to go down there and run. But, uh, um, um, so that was our first exposure to that. Look, you mentioned Tony Morris. He's the reason for my first medal because freshman, as long as you got to hand off the medley to him, he was not going to let anybody beat him. So it was the easiest medal in the world. Yeah. Yeah, he Buck, was fast. He Buck, could... you probably did. Was Ban your coach three years previous? Did yes. you have Creek Ban freshman, sophomore, junior? Okay. Yeah, that was that was my introduction to to being brought out to the lakes, the river east of town, and it'd be about thirty eight degrees, and they'd say, "All right, see you back in town." So you either <laughs> ran or you froze. Yeah. So yeah, we'd run four or five miles back to town, and I remember going to track meets, and we pulled out of a track meet because it was you couldn't see across the track track. It was blizzarding. Blizzard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, leading up to your guys' title, there was this little school called Hamburg. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you guys remember hearing much about Hamburg? Uh, oh. State champions in 74, 75, 76. They tied for the state title in 77. Uh, just a little tie Britt and Kanawha together. Britt won the 74 team title in 2A, the year Hamburg won it in 1A in 74. Uh, Robert Weber, I did a little deep dive. I'm like, Hamburg, I had even forgot where that was. Robert Weber was their coach. He won all four of those titles. Uh, legendary coach. I just thought this was kind of fun. He was 173 and 42 in football. Took him to some of the earlier state tournaments, uh, 72, 75, 81, 85, and uh, played for the first Class 1A state title in uh, 72, and they lost 35 nothing. Uh, one losing season in 21 years. And then uh, track, obviously, uh, just – phenomenal program uh did you guys have hamburg on your mind in 78 were they the favorite to win were you guys the favorite what do you remember about going into that 78 season i believe I hamburg was definitely the favorite to win and you know looking out all came out of nowhere and kind of put our mark on it so did you guys envision a title in 78 or were you hoping to just stay close to Hamburg? Do you, do you remember what the expectations or the feeling was going into that season? You know, from a, from the coaching standpoint, as I said, that was my second year of coaching. Uh, kind of dropped into Canal and the kids we had were awesome. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I think maybe speaking for everyone, that was probably the last thing that we even thought about. And maybe that's what really kept us loose and kept us going. And one thing led to another. All of a sudden, you know, Ziegler scores in the 100, Danny Mellon in the four, and all of a sudden points started coming in, and pretty soon people are going, you know what? You know, you guys, you might have a shot at this. And you're going, ah, whatever, you know. And next thing you know, it was a close race all the way through. But, uh, yeah, Hamburg, Hamburg had been there for many, many years. In fact, you know, they were runner-up in 78. And then in, basically in 79, they placed third place again. So, uh <laughs> They had a great program going down there. Did you know Coach Weber at all on a personal level, Rod? Did you get to know I him? I did at all? not. I did not. Yep. As I said, second year coaching, I'm not sure I knew half the kids in school yet, but uh just trying to keep your head above water. Pretty much. Hey, yeah. Rod. Remember, what's that? You probably mentioned it at some point, but I want to say, even though we maybe didn't know it, the town of Kanawha did, because I don't know if any town ever had the community support for a track program like Kanawha did. It was just amazing. Oh, and so that always helped us. Exactly. Well, and as I said, that Des Moines Register article in, in 78, I think, you know, Kanawha had the biggest and most boisterous bunch of fans in the stadium. I mean, and each year. And if you guys remember coming back after both those state titles, there was a lineup of cars clear to the blacktop south and a caravan at fire trucks, you know, we got to ride into town with the trophies and whatever and a great celebration. And, and, uh, and as I said earlier, I mean, not just track and field, but athletics in general and kids in general. So great. I don't know if you guys remember it or not, but you know, we didn't have the expectation of winning in 78. Um, at least I didn't, but I remember 
the last race, race was the 4x400. And you had sent some message down to us that I don't remember exactly, but if we placed at a certain level, we, we had the title. And I was like, that really pumped everybody up. Yeah. yeah, I think, Rod, I think you said we needed like three points to pull it I off. We had to finish third, I think. Yeah. Yeah, third or better in the four by four. And didn't we come and in second? 78, 16, we got third place at 333.01. Okay. And team title, Kanawa 41, Hamburg 36, and Rhinebeck had 23. But uh, yeah, that four by four relay, Buke, Pregnitz, Danny Mellon, and Buck, uh, uh, third place at three, th and that was six points right there. And that just kind of put us over the top. I remember Rod talking, you know, when we went down there, coach was talking about that Hamburger, Hamburg's a team to beat. And, you know, everybody pumped up Hamburg. I remember on the first prelims that we ran, the anchor I ran against, when he walked up to run, he had hair poking out of every hole of his track shirt. And I thought, holy cow, how old are these guys? And he had a full <laughs> beard and hair coming out the arm, lifting out the neck. And it's like, it's like okay, this is going to be interesting. So, But I don't know about you guys, but I'll be honest with you. If we had all sat down prior to that and said, how many of you know where Hamburg is located in the state of Iowa? You know, very few of us probably did. Yeah. And they had previously, I mean, they had been very, very successful in previous years. I mean, state title after state title. And here comes Kanawa out of nowhere and just kind of puts it to them. But, and yeah. Hamburg is probably like, where the heck is Kanawa? It was very same, yeah. the same thing, yeah. Exactly. And, and who are they with now as a school? Do you guys, does anyone know who they're with? I can't, I don't know. Now? Me. Yeah, Hamburg, where would they be? I'm sure they're consolidated, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Not sure who they're with. Trainer was well, trainer close enough down there. I wonder. Maybe I not. Can't tell you off the top of my head. Uh, before we go back to state, we're talking about you know you guys mentioned you know how you did at state in '78 conference. You guys, the North Star Conference. And speaking of school consolidations, I don't think there's a school left in that conference standing alone. Uh, you guys won your seventh straight North Star Conference title in 1978. Uh, who can quickly list off all the schools in the conference? I think someone already kind of listed a few of them off. I uh, got them. You got them, Buck? Go ahead. <laughs> yep. It's she Sheffield Chapin, Boone Valley, Goldfield, Laverne, Corwith Wesley, Cal, Missouri Thornton, Clemmy, and us. Yep. Not a single one of them stands alone right now, do and they? The, you the interesting Ventura? part about all the conference meets was is I remember when we would go to track meets and we would come out of – field events hardly have any points yeah. so and then we'd win you know once you start running and we win and everything i did i high jumped i shot putted just because our coach wanted us to get some points so i i high jumped i shot <laughs> putted i didn't discus and i didn't pole vault but it's like can you get us some points just do anything so it was fun to come up with more than zero after the field events because we had you know kurt kurt couldn't get a long jump all the time because of his back so <laughs> what's the story behind that kurt i got injured i think it must have been my sophomore year in football and in that injury then i found out it wasn't just an injury it was something that i was born with which took me out of playing football hampered me somewhat in basketball hampered me somewhat sophomore year in in a uh, track as well um so I kind of was gimpy most of those years, and I still am a little bit. So it can, tended to work out okay at certain times. But, yeah, it did bother me throughout the years. What kind of aura did you guys have around you at the conference track meet? Was it like, well, the other schools are like, oh, why bother? Can I was here? Was there kind of a, an edge to you or, you know, that, that swag, as the kids say these days? What was that like going to the conference meet and winning it so regularly? Well, I can speak. I can speak before Coach got here. Bar, our band would put us in the higher classes. We not conference, obviously. That was all one class. But every track meet we went to, we would go to. Coach would put us in the upper class. We ran against Britt. I don't know how many different times in different track meets. And then when we came, every time we'd go to meet, there's kids that come. They say, "Hey, what what class are you guys in?" <laughs> and we tell them, and they say, "Oh, good. We're not okay. We're in the other." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I think I think everybody on this on this thing probably had just as much fun as I did because that's 
when you'd go to the track meet, the first thing you did is you put your letter jacket on with all your medals and you ran around the track and said, we're here. So, <laughs> and I, the hardware. Yeah. Let's get into the state track meet here. Uh, just going through the results here. Um, start, you know, tell stories. What do you remember from these things? I'm just going to rattle them off and you guys can uh, talk accordingly. Uh, 1978 state track meet, Danny Ziegler, second in the 100. Uh, Danny Mellon was second in the open 400. Uh, the four by one took second as well, despite Danny Ziegler losing his shoe out of the starting blocks, according to my research, uh, to start the race. Uh, also in that relay, Prignance, Danny Mellon, Denny Kraft. Uh, let's talk about the shoes there real quick here, Mr. Ziegler. What happened on the just too fast of a start? Couldn't keep the shoes on. No, it was a rainy, rainy day, and we had suede track shoes at that point, and they just stretched out. I have no idea how we didn't get disqualified, because <laughs> after I handed off the baton, I think, to Danny <laughs> Bell, and I went sliding across the track and evidently didn't hit anybody, so everything was good to go. I was either <laughs> way in front or way behind one or the other. I, you were way behind. <laughs> <laughs> You think that affected your time at all? Was it still a pretty normal split for you? I don't know. Rod was keeping the splits. He always fudged them. Yeah. <laughs> no, Danny did an unbelievable job. I mean, we're standing in the stands there. Of course, we'd had it had been warm most of the day. And then we got that rain shower. And of course, the track was warm and everything was slick. I mean, he came out of the blocks. One shoe stayed in the block and away he went. Like he said, after you exchanged the baton, you slid on your rear end for about 10 meters around the track and but brought it home. So that, that was quite a story. I can remember I can remember standing and watching him go. And we back then we wore sock clear up to our knees, right? I mean, that was just what you did. And I remember <laughs> his sock going down and when he was running, his his the half bottom half of his sock was like a world be on the side of his foot going around like this as he's running it and i thought and he was of course fine because you couldn't hardly run like that and I, I was glad to see him get the baton handed off because i thought oh gee for this is we're not even going to get a run so i guess hey, that's that from probably a good thing that we didn't have a track to run in because uh, practice we always had to run with wet feet coach would make us run anyway <laughs> we're, hey dan i have a picture of that 1978 at the end of the state track meet us down on the track and we're soaking wet <laughs> i can share that uh yeah if you have a i think you should have access to share that shouldn't you or uh, is that looks those, like is that like right there? It says there's the picture there it is the track is still wet but you guys the hair and everything I don't, you can't probably see it that clearly but that's the same picture that's on the front of the canal reporter. That's the same one I sent you, Dan. Right. Yeah. Let me let me share my screen here. Um, and some of them I couldn't open, so I'm going to put it go. yeah. here. There it is. Yeah. Right Which, there. Right here. Not no. One to, the, to the right. Right the there. Right. Yep. There we go. Yeah. You guys don't look too happy though. <laughs> well, you can see the track still. We were, yeah. we were sick to our stomach at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh my! Somebody stole my letter jacket. Yeah, <laughs> that was your sophomore year, right, Kurt? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yep. I tell you, if I'd have been smart, I'd have made these kids work out in their letter jackets. We'd have been way faster. <laughs> the metals are laying down. Yeah, and there's some of the other pictures that I sent. If you look, and, and you'll be able to talk about this in the next one. You can talk about the '79 team, but I sent you an article, Dan, of of that article I was telling you about that the yeah. Konami fans hardly miss craft yeah. Yeah. from the season after I graduated. Yeah. That was in a Des Moines register. Yeah. 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 Harley miss, in Harley miss crafts absence. Yeah. <laughs> I never did understand it exactly, but <laughs> 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 you added uh, a few points that year. Yeah. yeah. The uh, four by two team in 78 won the state title time of one thirty one point seven. You guys set a state meet record with that time. Uh, that'd be Ziegler, Prignance, Danny Mellon, Danny Kraft. Uh, what do you guys remember about winning the winning the four by two? It was fun. <laughs> no, by the time I got the handoff, 
by the time I got it for the for the anchor leg, we were we were well ahead. I mean, I I forget we won we won it going away, but mm -hmm. by the time well, I you, got, they were them guys that had already got us a big lead. You take a look at that time. I mean, you guys in back in nineteen seventy eight running a one thirty one, pretty pretty salty. Yeah, it was it was pretty much over. Do you anyone remember the second place time? How many seconds difference it was? Uh, I don't have no, it. no, but I remember I remember a picture of it, and we won by I don't know fifteen yards. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a picture like that too. That was there was a huge gap there. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Harley won the long jump state title, new school record, twenty two feet three quarters of an inch. Uh, I got to ask you though, Kurt. I put in the notes at districts you jumped nineteen uh, five. What was the difference at state? I have no idea. I was as surprised as everybody else, quite honestly. <laughs> but um, you know, it was warm and we had good track and. The weather was great and all those kind of things. And I don't know, I think it just helped. And just, just being down here with those guys and uh, being the sophomore, it was fun. And it was, uh, I think I just was inspired by the way they were performing and it, that had to help as well. Yep. So um, uh, yeah, it was kind of lucky. It felt lucky that day. Cause I, when they, when they measured it, I was like, really, are you sure? And um, <laughs> so I was as surprised as anybody. So you guys talked earlier about field events. There wasn't a lot. Like, did you guys have a shot putter? Did you have a discus guy, or was it just Kurt Long jumping? What? What? How many people were on the the overall team in '78? Do you remember how many? Not just the guys here that went to state, but yes, '78 uh, we had 24 team members. Okay, 24 athletes. And back then, you know, we still had the pole vault. Yeah. Tried to talk Buck into that, but he kind of wimped out on it. So. <laughs> was the um, chat brother? Common I think sense my brother Dan it. did the pole vault. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. Then Wade Route later on, I don't know if you remember Wade qualified mm -hmm. for state years down the road, or whatever. But you know, and I think most of the meets we went to, the pole vault pits were just bags of foam, you know, and you'd bottom out and about break your neck coming down yeah. on it, and using a steel pole to vault with, and the, the equipment back then wasn't the greatest either, so. Was the javelin still a, an event back then? No, no. That was gone Shot by then? Did, yeah. Yeah. Shot, just a javelin catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it once and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going into the 4x4, four four, we already talked about this a little bit. The last race of the meet, uh, you guys needed. I had fourth, and I think, Rod, did you say third? We you got third to... place in the 4x4, in the four four, yeah. 333-01. Yeah, so uh, you need to finish that place. Uh, even if Hamburg won the 4x4, four four, you still need to get there to get the been, points. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Danny Mallon, uh, Steve Prignance, Danny Mallon, Danny Kraft took third, and you guys won your first state title in track. Um, talk about the celebration, the the way back home, the, the reception, the fans, all the good stuff that comes with the state title. <laughs> well, I – it. It was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was a different feeling. I didn't, I don't think any, it realized, any of us realized really what we'd done and didn't, you know, we was, we, we were used to winning track meets, didn't, or winning races. So the, the idea that we won state to me, if I think back, wasn't as, I don't think it sunk in until we got to, uh, you know, we had a big crowd in Canal, but when we got to the five miles, I think it was five miles south of town. The the fire truck was there, and then, uh, well, it seemed like half the town of Kanawha followed us in. And uh, then it was then it was real like, hey, this is we really did something here. Yeah. So, uh, Mallon Brothers, wasn't it that year too? That did your dad did they bring down like a motor home and we had it parked in that upper lot, and yep. it was kind of a home base for the athletes and parents and kids and it was just a real community type atmosphere up there and that there's a lot just up behind the stadium. And I think that was in 78. Yeah, I think that was, uh, Mark, I think that was your dad's RV. Oh, may, okay. Uh, yeah, might have been I think that was 79. Okay, yeah, 79. 79. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't remember what we used in 78. I think there was, seemed like we had kind of a base up there where all the parents would, you know, between events and stuff, everybody would be kind of hanging out up there, which is, 
pretty impressive. And like I said, the entire community and parents and everybody in the town of Kanawha was just so supportive of not just track and field, but athletics in general and education in general. When I already mentioned this, but I do remember this, you know, I had the chance over here in Clear Lake and even my son who enjoyed track a lot, watching track in bigger schools, but it really meant a lot to a canal, a, a town the size of Canal. You know, most schools aren't that size anymore. They consolidated, but at that time, it was a big deal for the town of Kanawha. So as much as we enjoyed it, I really think the community enjoyed it more. Well, to be honest with you guys as athletes, as I said, I mean, it, like Buck said too, it was almost like, okay, it's just one more meet we can bring home a trophy at, you know what I mean? Not that we really expected it, but when it came, it wasn't, it was kind of like, well, here we go again. But that was, you know, for me too, as, as I said, being just a second year coach at that time, what a great experience. I guess I'd, I'd say, I, I think it's a tribute to you, Rod, on this. Because if you look at most of the teams that, that went to state in, in our class, it was just a couple of, you, you typically had a couple sprinters, they would do an individual event and then, and then do the relays. And you look at this group here, we had nine people and, and all of them placed yeah. at state. I mean, that is very rare. And, and I think that's a tribute to, to you driving us and coaching us and inspiring everybody to, to really push because that's really unusual. Pretty good group of athletes. There's no doubt about that. Well, I still, to this day, I, I think of this all the time, especially when I go watch kids play and when, you know, between watching having my kids play different sports and all that, is one of the things that Coach Barkman told us is he says, you have to remember this is he was talking to us about the football field then just because that was his first contact with us and he said when you guys go on the field you represent the town and every little kid is watching you and i and when he said that it hit home because i remember being the fifth and sixth grader laying underneath the fence watching the football games and watching them those huge football players well when i you know when i think back but now i was probably as tall or bigger than most of them but i thought you know, when you're when you're four or five, six years old, that is huge. And it, I, to this day, I still remember that 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 you're representing everybody, and you have a lot of eyes. So act like you have a lot of high eyes on you and represent the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Funny speaking of track, that, I was. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I was just going to say, I remember Coach Parkama. I remember his whistle. When uh, our relay teams would be coming around the home stretch, you'd hear that whistle. And uh, I think that always uh, probably cut our time a couple of seconds as we put it in high gear. So yeah. uh, you really motivated us to bring out our best. So appreciate that. Buck, you didn't uh, fail your last month of high school, so you can come back and run one more year with these guys for Title II. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I I would have liked to have. I don't know if they would have found a place for me. It looked to me like they didn't need me, obviously. The next year they come back and they they mopped up even more than when I was there. So Sounds like shot for just got an opening, but yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's weird how the classes go, and, and I don't think I'm unique when I say this. You know, I I didn't hang out that much with the kids the class ahead of me. You know, I hung out more with these guys, and, and like Dennis and Dan, his uh, brother, Sean, he was in my class. I hung out with him all the time. It, you know, I think our two classes were closer, obviously, than I was closer to the class up above me because they had some good athletes, too, that graduated ahead of me, but they they didn't bring home a trophy. Mm -hmm. so. so going into 79, uh, <clears throat> had to have been the favorites, right? You only lose one guy off the team uh, that ran at state. Uh Assuming you guys also played other sports, what was it like? Uh, baseball, football, basketball. Did you guys have a wrestling program, by the way? No, no, no wrestling. Just on Saturday nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did the success bleed over into other sports? I mean, you guys are all. I mean, you typically got your fast and good athletes. You're gonna. It's gonna translate. What was it like in the other sports for you guys? Football and, and track were the main sports at Kanawha. Basketball, 
we didn't have a lot of wins. Baseball, I think we barely – I think one year we didn't even have a varsity team. So – yeah, I'd say in, in 1980 is when basketball kind of picked up. And I think we had a pretty strong basketball season under Coach Mishalki. Right. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever have I can remember I can remember in eighth grade um in basketball, we went undefeated. And then the next year, I think Ron Fick was the coach then. We decided we're gonna sh- just going to stick with football and basketball. And he was really mad at us <laughs> for not going back out for basketball. Yeah, I was the only one out, the only freshman out. <laughs> I know this is a track podcast, but it just piqued my interest. If any kid wanted to wrestle, was there a school nearby like Britt that you could take in or is just no one in Kanawha wrestled? No. And, and back then, I don't think there's any sharing – Possibly going. Clarion had wrestling, obviously. I mean, they're a dominant wrestling school, and Britt had the wrestling program, but there was not a wrestling program at all in the North Star Conference. That's crazy. Yeah. Especially with the Britt connection now. That was, you know, that was obviously their one of their big sports. Uh, right. I was, wasn't sure about that. Uh conference meet. Let's go to that quick before we go to state. Eighth straight conference title. Number one, was it close? And two, how long did that streak go before it finally got got snapped? I think that was the last one. Was it? Yeah. Yep. I think yep. so. And uh, what was the team scoring like for that last title? Was it – couldn't have been close, would be my guess. It was kind of a blowout. I don't remember the scoring, whatever, but <clears throat> we won the eight straight conference title that year, and we also were district champions that year. And I'm not sure the two district meets – God, where were we? Did we go to Applington? Applington. One year, I think. I think that might have been 79. Yeah, 79. Yeah. Applington. Was that the year it was so stinking cold for districts, too, and everybody's in snowmobile outfits and gloves? Yeah, and it was cold, it was cold and the wind was blowing. It was brutal, yeah. But, uh, and as I said, you know, that, that next year, with the group that we had from the year before, with Buck being the only senior, and then adding the four additional athletes, I mean, what a crew we had going into districts and going down to state too. So that was pretty amazing. Yep. And at that meet, let's get to the, let's get to state here. 45 team points. Uh, TRV twin river Valley was second with 21. So you had 24 point win there. Uh, Hamburg, like Rod said earlier, was third with 20 points. So they were just a point away from another runner up title. Right. Uh, Kurt was second in the 200 open with a time of 22.66. He also won his second long jump title, a jump of 21 feet, 11 and one quarter inches. Uh, Kurt, were you kind of considered the favorite as the returning champ that year? Were there some other good kids? Yeah, jumping? probably in long jump. You know what? And it was close, I think, if I remember right. Um, and uh, don't really remember why, but just didn't quite have it to get over that 22 again. But it still was a fun fun event and a fun season but yeah um i probably was picked to be the the winner but i don't remember that for sure rod you might remember that i i don't yeah i'm not sure if the the harms kid from wellsburg was he a long jumper too i know he he wasn't a long jumper he was the 200 200, kid he he almost won state by himself a couple times he was a pretty amazing runner yeah that was uh that was scott harms i um when i went to central college he ran track there as well okay Um, I met up with him at Central College and ran track there. Yep. Yeah. Go Dutch. Hopefully you tripped him for me. <laughs> of course, you know, looking back at Kurt and that long jump, I think, you know, looking back even to your sophomore year, I think when you hit that best jump, I think that was your last jump. And I think, yeah. I know when the one annual talks about, Coach, I think I'll go for it. I think that was your exact words. We're talking about how your other jumps had gone and, and in conversation, well, coach, I, I think I'll go for it. And that's when you hit that 22 footer and pop that thing off. And that last jump was amazing. Yeah. I had a few issues with scratching pretty consistently too. So, <laughs> Well, and there again, too, you look at the facilities that we jumped on and worked on throughout the year. They just were different. Yeah. What did you have in Kanawha for a long jump, high jump? What'd that look like? We, we had a hard surface. I think it was just a concrete runway, but just the old sand, you know, that you jump in and, 
And we did eventually, I think we finally got some porta pits, but some, a lot of schools we high jumped in, you know, they had the, just the bags of foam and so forth. And uh, back then too, you know, the pole vault was still going on and that was pretty spooky too. I mean, I look back at all these, and of course, I think from a coaching standpoint, that was one event that most coaches weren't real sad to see go at the state level because you had to have a daredevil to ride that sucker up there. But. <laughs> You just wonder about the origin of that. It's like the alcohol had to have been involved more than likely. <laughs> what, what are we I, think Danny, I think Danny Mellon would have been a heck of a pole vaulter. I don't know if he's got his audio on I yet or not. I've, I've texted him a few times. I don't think he can hear us. So I don't know what's going on. So he's just going to be the eye candy tonight. Apparently. There we go. <laughs> so Scott, you took sixth in the open eight. Uh, talk about uh, you guys were kind of known for sprinting so to, to get into the more of the distance races what was that like for you Scott taking uh, getting a medal at state yeah it was thrilling <laughs> if I remember correctly we were all supposed to run in one heat but it rained right before and they split us into two heats all right. and I won the second heat and coach Barkman yelled down from the stands I think you got sixth <laughs> <laughs> which was good enough for me I was happy about that Scott, I don't remember that they split the heats like that, but now that you say it, I, I think you're right. Yeah, you uh, – We went we went into Mark's camper while it was no. raining. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You ran a 203.24 that year, which was one of your best. And uh, Sticking with the distance here, four by eight. Uh, Kent, Bruce, Scott, and Mark, uh, you guys placed fifth. Um, again – a lot of people think sprinting when they think of these Kanawha teams, but you guys were getting some points there as well. Um, what do you guys remember about that four by eight race? I remember I was, I was the lead off runner and I remember thinking, why are they running so fast? And I just, <laughs> I'm like, God, we never took off that fast. And I just ran with them and it's like, wow. You know? And uh, I think if I remember right, I think at, at districts, we ran about eight forty five. And I think that was maybe the first time we'd broken nine all year. And then at state, I think we ran like 821 or something. 821, 64. Wow. Yeah. So we just, I don't know, those last, well, one, those last two two races were on an all-weather track, whereas right. everything else was in solar. Mm -hmm. and so that was a little faster. But, yeah, we had a great, you know, it was just fast and everybody ran well. I don't know, you know. Everybody had a PR time, I'm pretty sure, and uh in the uh, in their 800 Brad, was that just one heat of the 800 or bay eight or did, was there more than one i i was thinking we all ran at the same time at that point i think they bottled everybody up on one and like i said if that lead off runner made it through the first 200 you maybe had a shot because a lot of kids went down and got bottled up and banged up and boxed in and it was it was quite a grueling first 200 meters back but then that was the boring race Correct me if I'm wrong on that four by eight, Meiskins, Kraft, Jackson, Stupka, that was the order, correct? Mm -hmm. Mark, did you anchor? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, and like, like we were talking earlier, I mean, Kanawha track and field, put it in perspective, four by eight team got a state medal. I mean, that was, that was pretty impressive when you stop and think about it over the years, the distance runners that, you know, somewhat lacked and, but uh, you guys, did a great job in that aspect. Yeah, yeah I remember like we, were, we were just really happy to make it to state. Uh, my sophomore year, we got third in districts in both of the relays that I was in, and so to to uh, make it to state was big. And then then to have everybody run so well, that was just icing on the cake for us to be a part of it. Was it twenty four teams per event like it is now back then, or was it less event less people in each event? No, the, I'm, if, if I remember, I'm pretty sure it was 24, yeah. 24. But I, I didn't put this in the Hall of Fame letter, but the 4 by 8 team at halftime of the game where you guys get introduced, we are going to have you do the 4 by 8 um, <laughs> There you go. You have, a couple, a, great you idea. have a couple of months to get ready. So just We won't be breaking <laughs> any records, so. <laughs> That's all right. It's just going to be for entertainment purposes. That yeah, there's, there's paramedics there. You'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> Four by eight is a total of 32 yards. You guys can do it. Yeah. You bring the cones and just move the cones in like you did at practice. Back yeah. Then. yeah. So, you'll be doing playing ring around the rosy by the end of it. So, yeah. 
Yep. I, my grandsons asked me if I could run the 800 meter now, and I said I couldn't run 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a bike, maybe. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember. The one thing I remember was districts when we qualified at Applington, and it was that really nasty day. And I can just remember when we came around the first corner, you just ran right into the wind. And and it was, you was just thinking, how can we, you know, how are we going to do in this race? And so it was an amazing feat that we were actually able to qualify at that point. You know, just talking about relays and whatever, looking back and from a coaching standpoint, I know a lot of times the things you fear most about running relays are exchanges and batons and stuff like that. But with you, the group of guys in those years or even previous and after that, for some reason, it seemed like the exchanges were always awful clean for us. I mean, very seldom did we boot that thing around. Other than when I, I'm trying to think, was that that district? Well, that was that district where Brother Dan got cut off in that four by four, wasn't it, Buke? The Titanka yeah. kid, Titanka kid on the back stretch, and of course, after that district, I think most of you guys stepped off the track and hurled off the sideline there. But and I remember Danny, he got cut off on that four by four relay. I think we ended up getting second. And he's bending over, and the last thing he says to the Titanka kid, uh, we'll see you at state, you know. <laughs> Speaking of Danny Mellon, we got you now. Are you good? I'm here. Hey, hey buddy. We Hi. We're going to redo all the introductions so Danny can be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, uh, let's get it's your introduction only, what, in here. 8 o'clock? <laughs> Tell everybody who you are, where you're at, what's keeping you busy these days. Uh... This is Dan Mallon. Um, I live in Urbandale. Uh, wife and three kids and six grandkids. Uh, work for Berkshire Hathaway Energy, building wind turbine projects and solar projects awesome. all over the country. And could you hear us the whole time or no? No, I couldn't. Okay, so these guys have been talking trash about you the entire <laughs> podcast. It's, it's been pretty nasty, so you, it's your turn well, to fight back. I just finished up working for the day, so. <laughs> Work, that's a four-letter word. Yeah. <laughs> about ready to hang it up. <laughs> Let's get to those sprinters here like we've been talking about here. Uh, you guys, your team, uh, Coach Barkham's team swept the three main relays. You guys won the four by one, four by two, four by four. That doesn't happen very often to this day. I don't think you see that more than every once in a while. Uh, Ziegler, the Malins, Pregnants won the four by one at the time of 44.44. Four by two was Ziegler, Denny Malin, Kurt Harley, and Pregnants. Uh, broke their own state record set the year before with a 131.02. Uh, six tenths of a second faster than in 78. And uh, the title was well secured before the 4x4, four four, unlike the year before. But the Malins, Pregnance, and Harley still went out, set a new state record uh, en route to another state title. 328.72 was their time in that 4x4. Four four. Uh, breaking records, winning titles, turning heads. I asked a little bit earlier, do you guys have a little swag about you where other schools, even bigger schools, kind of like they're, you know, this look out for this Kanawha team, watch them when they're when they're on the track. What was that kind of like for you guys being the the favorites, breaking records, winning titles, all that good stuff? Well, you guys remember, I think, I think, I don't know if Bruce and Mark, you remember this, but remember we would run against all them bigger schools at Drake and you and I and all that. Well, and then we would run against them kids from Des Moines. And that's where, when, when that kid come up and says, hey, boo dogs, where to get all those medals? That's where that, <laughs> that's where that come from, is when that kid come up to us, that, that his name was TJ from Des Moines Tech. So. Sporting all the hardware. That's, that's right. right. Gotta, get, <laughs> gotta get the hardware. <laughs> and Buck, you were yep. telling me on the phone the other day, you ran into that guy. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, about, you know, I do, I do a lot of work in Des Moines and with all the schools and stuff. And I was walking through, it's now central campus, but Des Moines tech is where that is. And, and, you know, they've got a trophy case. It's got all kinds of trophies in it. Well, I was walking through there and this guy was looking at trophies and, you know, and just because I walk by there, I, every trophy case I walk by, I always look at, and he was looking at the 78 
trophies and stuff like that. And I, I said, you know, I made some comment or whatever. He just said, yeah, he says, I ran track. I said, yeah, you did. What year? Yeah. He said, I graduated in 78. I said, really? I said, uh, he kind of looked familiar. And I said, you, uh, so you ran, you ran at tech. Yeah, I ran at tech. I said, you aren't TJ by chance, are you? Yeah, I am. And I said, and he looked at me and he says, he says, you kind of look familiar. I said, well, I'm one of the group of the little t the town of, you had more kids in your class than we had in our, in our town. So yeah, he, we kind of remembered, he kind of remembered me and kind of remembered when that's, that was, you know, 35, 40 years before that, but I couldn't believe of all, of all people to meet, I met him standing by the trophy case. So do do any of you guys remember, you know, we used to run at Dickinson Relays, and of course, I think we set three state indoor records a year. We had the good you good kids and whatever. Didn't that one year when we went down there, we took Sharnhorse Station Wagon, and I think my vehicle, Kathy, ended up driving. It was a blizzard all the way down, and we got into the parking lot, and there's big frost bubbles and stuff, and we just buried that station wagon. We just walked out and left it in a lot and called the wrecker. And I think by the time we got out of that meet, you know, they had the thing pulled out, but it was just ugly that afternoon with the weather. But we made it down there and had a great day of running and uh, actually made it home, which was pretty good. Buck, did you make it back to the state meet to watch these guys run after you graduated? You know, I don't remember if I did or not. I I know I went to a few different track meets and watch them run. I don't, I don't remember if I went down or not. I'm asking my wife if she remembers it. <laughs> She's saying, no, she don't remember either. I don't, I, uh, I think I did, but I don't remember. All I know is, like I said before, you know, like I said, at, at the, uh, you know, at, when we come back that first year and the cop, the, when, when Rod Bark and Rod coach was talking on the megaphone, so they handed it to me because I was again, the old guy. And, and I just <laughs> said, Hey, you know, thanks for, told all the people thanks for coming and watching us all year and I said and I, I kind of remember my words I said you guys need to support these guys next year because they're gonna they're gonna clean them up again and, and little did I know they did way better than I thought they were gonna do so yeah it was B fun. Buke I don't know if you remember was it maybe your junior year or senior Danny had qualified in the 400 meter dash we we're in the stands and I think the weather had gotten kind of bad. And of course, I, and of course, I preached to you guys all the time, warm up, stay in the field house, warm up, warm up. We're in the stands and I'm looking down the straightaway and this is the final of the 400 dash and they're coming down the straightaway. And I look, there's no Danny Mellon. I sprinted down the stands, ran into the field house. All of a sudden he's kind of like walking around, Danny, get your, I mean, he sprinted from the field house to the starting line, jumped in the blocks. And that's when he got second place that year is just, unbelievable yeah. but i think he we ran scared hang. more than, ran scared more than anything we don't <laughs> hang out in the field house and just pretend to stretch and get ready for the race <laughs> hey do you remember how that you remember how this field house smelled oh yeah all the icy hot that was in and stink oh and it would be 180 degrees and about 95 percent humidity in kids there. everywhere didn't need to stretch with that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys were all seniors then that 79 season, except for Kurt, correct? You were a junior. Did I get that right? I was a junior. That's correct. Yeah. Marco. Mark and, yeah, and you, were, you were a junior too. Okay. How'd you guys do that next year in 1980? Yeah, we, we did pretty well. Um, let's see. My, my memory is, uh, somewhere in the middle of the track season, Kurt pulled a hamstring and he was a key part of our team and that, that, uh, set us back. Well, that came at Ventura. Ventura had chopped their track to go to metric that year, and they had that K light surface. And where they on the on the turn where they redid the track, it hadn't packed as well. And I remember Kurt, you were running the two hundred. You came around down that straightaway, and it just it pushed. It didn't push back, and you overextended. You popped that hamstring. I mean, it dropped you completely to your face. You got up and still finished second in the two hundred. Wow. And we spent we spent many a days in the training room icing and icing and icing. And we got you somewhat healthy for state. And, uh, you know, you look at the 1980s, we had 32 kids on that team. Again, one coach. Uh, not sure what we placed in conference, but state track, you guys scored 12 points and finished 11th. Um, 
Kurt was 21 or 21 11 in the long jump, placed second, nursing that hamstring. The four by four, David Dahlman, Randy Yakel, Mark Stupka, Kurt Harley, you guys placed third with 330. And then Mark Stupka, you finished sixth place in the 800 meter run at 159.81. So, you know, there, you know, there's a group of kids coming back to that third year and still had a pretty darn good showing in Des Moines. Uh, you guys already talked about the 78 team. Like the whole community was just thrilled. It meant more to them, maybe what it meant to you guys just for that, that camaraderie of the town and that, that town pride. So obviously in 79, it was probably the exact same of now we can say we're back to back state champions. Uh, everyone agree. Any, any stories about the celebration afterwards? He just had tremendous support from the entire community. It was the crowd that was there was amazing. It was a good feeling. Well, I think I, there do, I do remember we were standing again in the baseball field or softball field there downtown, and yeah. I do remember the Wes Hancock track team going by in the bus, and they're I, I can't remember what they're saying or what but i remember them going by while we were out there celebrating mm -hmm. you know one of the thing one of the things i remember about that run is when you talk about the crowds we had it would be it, it kind of always amazed me how that you know we start off in the block and as soon as we started you know, the race started our fans were cheering and you know it was it was cheer all the way around, and they'd cheer all the way around because they it's like hey just don't drop it you're good you know so it was awesome having all them guys there we we had probably more we probably had more more fans in the fans than all the towns combined well i think my dad said that there was other fans other than kanawa cheering yeah. us on yeah yeah, yeah. good point Rod, you mentioned the track in Ventura, but you know, I still think sometimes the success of the teams really were was helped by the no track. We mentioned that earlier, but we didn't run good tracks all year. Good tracks, good weather. We got down to state. Usually, even though there were storms, it'd be hot. You'd walk on that track and it was just a whole new atmosphere. And when you talk like the four by 800, just the time they cut. I go to, I still go to state track meets. And there's amazing athletes every year and train and stronger and all that, but they don't necessarily always perform better at state. Right. It's yeah. another meet. But for us, it felt like you were walking in, well, you were walking into the Drake stadium right. and it was a big deal. What you went from, you, but you went from spikes that were one inch long running on yep. center to all of a sudden <laughs> these little needles that were about a four or five sixteenths long. And that's it. Yeah. That was the. I remember I borrowed Brian Greaves' track shoes because mine blew up. <laughs> that's why you were so. I didn't funny. have. I didn't have money to buy another pair, and they were too. Big. <laughs> that's but, a blast from the past. <laughs> I'm gonna go through some of these pictures here again while we're uh, slowly. So that's that's, this up. that's picture right there is that hang still hangs to this day in my basement. I got a in my room in the basement. This is one of the ones I dug out, and it's it's. They're going from left to right. That's me, and then Sean Mallon, Danny Ziegler, and then uh, Dennis, okay. Dennis Mallon, Pregnants, and then Danny. But I don't, I can't, I can't make out who was standing behind him. Right here in the, you just see his head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is it a cat? But the, that's yeah. these, that's the shirts that Dennis and I have on. We bought them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Buck, do you have a cap on there? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and sunglasses, don't you? And <laughs> sunglasses and red tennis shoes. <laughs> but they went good with purple. <laughs> Got to recreate that one. Oh, golly. Oops, that's not bad. Right, too far. Wrong way. There we go. I want to get this one up there. No. Yeah. Rocky had hair. Got, I think we, yeah, I had hair, actually. Didn't we go to Clarion and have those pictures taken? I think so. I believe so. I think yeah. One of the photographers down there at Clarion. I mean, you guys look at what you did. Look at look at the hardware in front of you. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know those those three relay trophies, those times stayed around for a long time. Yeah. Um, 
my father-in-law was the track coach at panorama and i think they beat our last record like the four by two in yep. 90 yeah. or in yeah 95 i think the yeah. year they won state so yeah that was those Amazing. those records were around for a long time i think to kurt's point about the the awe or aura of being at drake stadium was was really impressive and and and, and motivated you to, to push yourself one of the things i remember you know we're running all year long on these one we didn't have a track and then even when we went to local meets they weren't all that great of tracks <laughs> and so when we got to state i remember in 79 our four by 400 meter time was not all that great even though we won district we didn't have a good, a great time, and we just barely made it into the first heat. And so we were on the inside lane, yep. and, and we were lucky we got into the first heat, because otherwise we would have been just running against ourselves at that mm -hmm. point. And, and we had the slowest time. And so we were fortunate that we got into that heat. Um, <clears throat> so I remember running that i think dennis you led that off and yeah and we ran in lanes the first lap the whole first lap was lane and you handed off to me and then we we yeah. had to um when you got around the curve you could cut in out of lanes yeah. i remember when you ha handed me the ton i was just had up my mind is get out of that get around that curve being first get around that curve being first and just sprinting like mad and then thinking, okay, now they're going to pass me. Now they're going to pass me. <laughs> and running down the back stretch. And and no one passed me. And then going into the curve, like, okay, they're going to be passing me pretty quick because I'm getting tired. They're going to be past me. And coming out of the curve and no one's passed me. And all of a sudden it hit me. They're not going to pass, pass me. <laughs> and I just, I think I handed off to, uh, I should I hand off to on that? Was that you? Kurt. Was that probably Kurt? me. I ran third, yes. Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. And, and seen you down there and I just ran down, got it to you and you were just like a bat out of, you know what? <laughs> and you just pulled away like no one's business. And it was, it was really exciting. And, but it was a little unnerving that, that we were, we really didn't have that good of time going into the, the state meet. Yeah. But yeah, you, lucky you had the lead. You didn't want to get bunched in around the know, corner. Well, and that's what I, I think. Coach Barkman had stressed is, you know, come, make sure you're ahead coming out of that curve. No matter what, yeah. And uh, it gets pretty messy on that backside. What I, one of the things I remember about uh, Danny was Stanley or Danny Mallon. He'd always anchor the mile. And he, I, I, I'm guessing he had a conversation with just about every anchor on every team that we ever ran against because he was always jawing with somebody about the race. We're going to race down the back stretch or something. So, well, the one the one meet I look, I see his head turn and we finish, we win it. I said, Stan, what what are you talking about back there? Oh, I, I just asked that kid if he wanted to race. <laughs> so then his his hips went down and it was all over. But you know, Kurt, looking back at you look at what you did along with the rest of these guys. I mean, look at your junior year as far as uh with the two hundred dash, the long jump, the two relays. I mean, me, I mean coming off that injury that sophomore year i mean four four medals that stayed as a junior amazing amazing yeah i was it was fun you know i i'm a big believer that we don't need i don't want to live in my past but i when i think about this group of the guys and uh and the it was just flat out fun those years were just fun and we enjoyed it we had it when you came in and coached us you brought a whole just a environment for us to just really thrive in but also just enjoy track and so I always talk back about I there's you can't help but remember how it turned out, but it was just simply fun. And I like to always remember it that way. And I did a podcast with Rod a couple of years ago now, episode like 18 or something like that. And he just kept going, Well, these guys were fast, these guys were good athletes, these guys had whatever. I'm like, everything I've heard about Coach Barkamo is he he knew it. He was you know, a very good coach. And you guys have mentioned a lot of times, make sure when you're here, you gotta be in the lead. We need this. So uh, Rod deserves a, a lot of credit. It's Long not time. just 
put the fast guys out there and let them run. I, I think uh, what I notice on this podcast, 104 episodes in, is people always are deflecting the praise to the other people. So it's always just that back and forth game. But um, there, there's a lot of a lot of coaching involved in track, whether you have the the guys, the horses out there or not. So I, um, one thing I was excited about doing this podcast tonight with all you guys was making sure Rod got his due for the the coach he was. So. Well, and I, I look back too, and I just, but you just did it. I look, like I said, I mean, I was the only coach. And so you're talking, you got to coach the pole vault. You got to coach the long jump. You got to coach the shot, put the discus, all the sprints, all to the best of your ability. And on the other hand too, you've got to have faith in your athletes and just let them understand that what they're capable of doing and, and go for it. You know, I mean, you can't hover over athletes that much too. I mean, train them, put them in the right direction and, let them run. And as I said, too, with kids like this, it was easy, easy to do. Rod, I don't remember if uh, we talked about this in the the one podcast I did with you. What would a coach, a, a head track coaching contract all by yourself, what dollar value was attached to that contract in 1977 when you got there? How much would you have gotten paid to win a couple state titles for Kanawha High? I don't even remember, but I do remember, I think, God, I think my very first teaching and coaching job, I was in Schleswig, Iowa, and I think I had eight different coaching duties because we had a middle school activity period, and I think my total salary at that time was $10,500, and I think when I came to Kanawha, I think either that year or before I came, I think the base pay was like 8700 bucks. and coaching, I'm not sure what it was, but it was minimal, yeah. but you know, kids... Kids weren't in it. I mean, kids were in it for the glory too. And I think coaches got into it. It wasn't about the pay. It was about working with athletes like this. And when you get pay back from them the way they did, I mean, that was worth all the dollars and cents you could think of. So I think that that segues nicely to my next bullet point on the notes. Ten years later, Kanawha High is no more. And it's blended in with Brit to make Wes Hancock. And you know how it goes, you know, sometimes you, you quote, lose your identity as a, as a town or a school or whatever, but obviously Wes Hancock's turned out to be a pretty good thing over the years. Uh, I got to make about 50 phone calls this winter to Hall of Famers and their families, you know, it just depends on the situation. Uh, I, I think I, I think I got to everybody on the phone on this Zoom right now and between the 10, 11 of you guys, I think we, I talked to the Kanawha track teams for about seven and a half hours. It was just like, I didn't want to hang up the phone. We had a good time, good conversations. And uh, I'm the chairman of the Hall of Fame. And uh, we were honored to to put you guys in this year. Again, September 6th, uh, 2024, Belmont Columbia football game. You guys will be introduced at halftime to the crowd. The four by eight will do their thing. And then I uh, will uh, <laughs> make sure there's plenty of ice out at the golf course. Yeah, and uh, celebrate you guys out there with a with a semi formal reception. What uh, what's it mean to you guys in 2024 to be remembered for what you did in 1978 and 79? Feels great. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you you did all that. Like I said, you did all that stuff. You, we didn't think and we none of us said I'm sure that we're going to be state champions this year. But it turned out that way. And, and I still, you know, I'm connected to these guys. And even Coach Barkham, I, like I say, I'm, I see him two or three times a year and he's always coach. That's yeah, obviously. So it, it was fun. It was great. It was fun hanging out with these guys. It was fun going to school together with them. Um, just the athlete, the athletics that we did all together. Um, it's fun to tell my grandkids that, you know, when I, when I had a, a grandkid that, grandson that won a race the other day and he had a ribbon i said oh yes and he said i told him i said come on i said i'll show you some of grandpa's medals <laughs> well, it, you know, he couldn't believe all that <laughs> well, i said that's more than one race but i said i said i said yeah it's hard to believe grandpa was fast at one time you know we were all has-beens or all has-beens now right <laughs> you know and not to disrespect any place or whatever but you guys as athletes i mean i knew i knew where those ribbons ended up I mean, there weren't many ribbons that you guys hung on to because not many of you guys got ribbons and meets and whatever. But, you know, I forgot to mention, too, looking back at that 79, I don't know if we mentioned the the team scores for that. 
But that 79 team, you guys doubled up. We had 45 points, and Twin River Valley was second, a distant second at 21. And Hamburg, wasn't that, wasn't that the most uh, points scored in a state you, track meet? At that point, yeah, at, at that juncture of the year, I think I think you're right. But yeah, the, 40, the, it um, lasted quite a while because I think in 07, the West Hancock boys team broke that record that that team had set to break your record or something. It was okay. something like that. Or maybe yeah. there was one in between. I can't remember, but it was, it lasted a decent while. And then it actually was a, you know, a canal connection that broke it again. So yeah. many years later. But, yeah. so. but you look at that year too. I mean, out of that crew, there are four first place. I mean, three relay champions, then Kurt in the long jump. I mean, right there alone. And then the rest of the guys doing their due diligence, scoring points too in the meet. So it was it was pretty amazing. And again, the community support and the families and parents and stuff was, I mean, second to none. I mean, you just and I don't have a lot to compare it to, I guess, but it was it was a great experience for me and one that I'll never forget. That's for sure. I mean, I still have the pictures up on my wall of the, the kids that I showed, you know, those little state track pictures. And we still have the, I mean, those coaches' achievement awards hang up there. Yeah. In fact, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember these things that were. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Bulldog Country. What I'm about the K hats? But, so, a lot of great, well. And then looking back too, I don't know who did. Remember, I don't know if these were the bank, whatever. But Kanawa, 1978 and 79 state track champions, pens that I think they threw out at the parade or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. Le Leroy Shornhurst got um, pens. I think he also got chiclet. Gum, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had lifesavers. Uh, life yeah, yep. that was really yeah. I should have had a that. pack of lifesavers. Yeah, I still I have the chiclets gum. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got a whole pack of the chiclets from somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, yeah. And in fact, they're still in the wrapper. I'll have to bring those. I'll have to bring those to the event, but we're not going to open them. <laughs> uh, as we're so, wrapping this how, thing, how, oh, go ahead, Benny. How long did the uh, track and football program last in in Kanawa? Did it last till eighty nine? 88 was the last year that Britt and Canal were separate. 89 was when football season is when it became West Hancock, fall of 89. Okay. But I think I think they shared football with Boone Valley one year and Corwith and Wesley and Laverne one year too, didn't they? Right. I, yeah. Was okay. Titanka mixed in one of those years too or something? K, it was KCWLBV one year. Canal, Corwith, Wesley, Laverne, Boone Valley for football. Yeah. And I don't know if that lasted more than a year or two. I'm not sure. And what was your last year, Rod? I can't remember if I'm in that canal. Really? No, yeah, eighty-eight. Okay, so you met, you went all the way till the end until it. Yeah, we we in fact, I think that next year is when they start sharing football. Yeah, eighty-nine yeah. fall of eighty-nine. We came to Four City. We came to Four City in the fall of eighty-eight. Yeah. yeah, I tell you, the years of coaching up here too. I mean, we Four City. I mean, we had unbelievable distance kids i look back and think my god could you imagine if we had you guys as sprinters and half milers and throw together with our milers and two milers that we had up here it had been lights out year after year but it was just a total different coaching atmosphere too coming up here but uh with the you know difference in kids and so forth well, i think this is probably a good stopping point guys uh about 8 40 at night here as we're recording uh thanks again to my 20 sponsors uh next up on the podcast i have three generations of the zool family and then i have a rescheduled one with jordan wyland and then jeff stevenson the 1973 kanawa football team i'm pretty pumped i think i have eight or nine guys on that coming on and then uh shay smith a cheerleader at the university of northern iowa right now are my next five podcasts um any last minute shout outs or anything that you're like oh crap during that time when we were talking about this i didn't get to it anything real quick here any of you want to throw out there i guess from my standpoint dan i would just like to throw out a shout out to you for just an unbelievable job and creating these activities and these podcasts not alone just this one but all the ones you've done over the years and including the canal situation it's just it's been awesome to get our stories out there and get some of the faces out there and for me it's just great to see 
all these stud athletes again. So like I said, maybe we can get the batons out and see what times we can run. <laughs> again, I'll, this I'll, is I'll, a, I'll be on the watch. This nice. is a phrase deflecting podcast, like I said earlier. There's so many people I can and teams I can talk to because Britton Kanawa and Wes Hancock have just produced team after team, athlete after athlete. So again, it's just me doing a little bit of the behind the scenes work to make it happen, but it's all the fact that we have this many great this much greatness that we can celebrate. So that's the fun part. So anybody well, else? I thank you for getting us all together because like I said, I haven't seen a lot of these guys since 79 or 78 or 79. Uh yeah. yeah. The Malin, the Malin twins. I'm gonna have to get with you guys so we can go play golf someday. Because I go oh, to definitely every day. So. <laughs> so we'll go. We'll go play some golf. So that's what I did every day for a year. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you all be practiced up then. Then I had to go back to work. <laughs> but no, I Dan, I appreciate you getting this all together, and obviously thankful for the committee that whoever whoever started this Hall of Fame committee, and then. And uh, and then even to think that that uh, we could be on. So I'm appreciative of the fact everything. And like I said, Kanawha is still my hometown, although I haven't lived there for a lot of years. Kanawha is still home, and I still watch West Hancock football. I watch her scores. I I do all that. So I still have a connection back there. Yeah, 2024 is going to be another good football season. There, the people, you know, was, oh, they lost quite a bit. No, they got a lot coming back, so it should be a good fall. So and. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to end it. I've never done this before, but uh, the Brit community is is hurting right now. Uh, we lost a, a young man a couple weeks ago, Steve Eisman. Uh, a horrible accident. Good friend to everybody. So uh, just shout out and prayers and thoughts to the to the Brit community. I was up there for that visitation. That was a that was a tough one, uh, tough funeral. Um, but Brit and Kanawa, they just merged so well together over the years, and um, just. It, it's a tough time up there right now. A well-known guy from a well-known family and just a, just a happy dude. So I uh, just wanted to shout out the Eisman family. So uh, you guys don't go anywhere once I stop recording because there is something I want to talk to you guys about before we wrap it up really, really fast. So uh, thanks again. I always, a lot of times I end up with Go Eagles, but tonight it has to be Go Bulldogs. Go, no, how's it go, Buck? Go, hey, Bulldogs. Way to get out of Go Bulldogs. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everybody.